Let's firm up the ideas of uh, this zonally varying basic state, basis state. It should be basic state uh, with a numerical experiments. Always easier to put in realistic conditions when we go for uh, nonlinear solutions. So idealizations and simplifications can be uh, avoided. So I already mentioned that we are looking at uh, three cases with various uh, perturbations within these uh, states, basic states. Uh, east, weak easterlies uh, in the deep tropics with westerlies around. Uh, weak westerly duct provided in the middles corresponding to the Pacific longitudes and stronger westerly duct with strong meridional shear and more realistic state that we have been looking at from chapter 1 onwards. Uh, the ex experiments uh, done included these uh, various perturbations, so symmetric case, weak westerly duct, uh, strong westerly duct, and the forcing being made wider and uh, stronger uh, uh, in the stronger uh, westerly duct. Uh, these are the various figures and the source of the perturbation uh, in the extratropics uh, at various locations uh, like 20 north dateline, 20 north Greenwich Meridian and so on uh, with different wave numbers to see if there is any particular uh, wave number and location that makes a more efficient uh, penetration into the tropics of the perturbation from uh, extra tropics. Okay? So we are not saying anything about uh, the perturbations or the source uh, of the perturbation. Typically there are plenty of uh, perturbations in the mid-latitudes that we'll see uh, later on. But this is the tropical dynamics course, so we'll focus on the impact on the tropics. So this is the uh, first case where we are looking at the perturbation zonal velocity field with a forcing of uh, zonal wave number 1 at 20 north and date line with the weak uh, easterly basic state. The distribution of the perturbation of zonal wind component at 100 days for Ka equal 1 forcing centered at uh, phi equal to 0 uh, latitude uh, Jeez. Uh, at the uh, geopotential, uh, uh, given geopotential and 20 north, uh, the initial total zero zonal velocity contour uh, at the edges of the blue shading, whilst the red solid line indicates u bar plus u prime equal to zero in the final configuration. Basically, you introduce the perturbation the system produces zonal perturbation velocities and kinetic energy and then you see how the uh, background state u bar plus u prime is modulated so you can see that the uh, original basic state has these uh, uh, edges of easterlies whereas due to wave perturbation these red lines are perturbing that basic state okay it's a feedback but you see that there are these clear uh, tilting propagations which correspond to energy propagation from uh, the uh, perturbation going in each direction. So you have perturbation at 20 north, but the signal is go all the way into the mid latitudes, uh, high latitudes, and these phases of uh, easterly and westerly perturbation velocity is coming in and basically hitting a wall at the uh, easterly uh, tropical flows, right? And the southern hemisphere is basically unperturbed in this case. If you take state B where we have a, a weak westerly duct, then uh, we have same forcing at uh, two locations, 20 north and the date line and 20 north and the Greenwich Meridian and obviously in one case uh, you have uh, the forcing that is pretty close to the westerly duct so you can see that now much more uh, of a signal in the U prime is come down uh, clearly into the tropics in the westerly duct region with the easterly is still blocking the uh, southward uh, penetration of the extratropical forcing whereas if you put the forcing uh, over where there is a western uh, there is no westerly duct 
then you can see that you get uh, a different kind of energy propagation uh, than in this case. So basic state matters, zonal variations are the basic state matter, where the perturbation is put matters and we'll see in a minute that the scale of the perturbation matters as well. Ka equal 1 is a large scale uh, perturbation which can be larger than the westerly duct. Okay, So you can see that there is more penetration of the uh, perturbation into the deep tropics here uh, than here. So even though the forcing is away from the westerly duct, um, the scale of the forcing is such that you get a different response. Okay, we'll see the wave length scales and uh, so on in a minute as a table. This is just other cases with uh, again a uh, weak, uh, weak westerly duct but now the forcing is in wave number three, so the scale is uh, length scale is smaller. Remember, as wave number increases, the waves become shorter scales. So now you have much more penetration with the smaller meridional uh, zonal scale of the perturbation, and now you have more penetration into the uh, well, somewhat of a more penetration into the southern hemisphere. Uh, here. This is now for the other case, but for this length scale, the forcing is not able to come into the westerly duct at all. It is basically dying away uh, by the time you reach uh, past the uh, easterly basic state. Uh, so you can see the difference here. With this length scale, you got the forcing going from uh, zero degrees all the way down into the western duct for k equal 3, that's not the case. Okay, so the message is still the same. And now you can take strong westerly duct and put the forcing at uh, dateline, and now this is k equal 3. So now you have clearly extended the influence all the way down into the southern hemisphere with the modulation of the basic state by this red line. So the blue line is the original basic state and the red line is the kind of equilibrated u bar plus u prime state uh, after the propagation has happened. So you can see here the perturbation is slight uh, and so as, as well as here. So Southern Hemisphere uh, cross hemispheric influence also depends on uh, the scale of forcing, the location of the forcing and so on. Okay. So let's summarize that. Large scale disturbances generated in the middle latitudes of one hemisphere have little effect on low latitudes when there exists a easterly uh, basic state uh, or a band of easterlies between the source and the equator, source of the perturbation and the equator. Large scale disturbances generated in the mid latitudes of one hemisphere may have significant influence on the equatorial regions and the higher latitudes of the other hemisphere if at some longitude uh, a zone of westerly winds exist in the equatorial region. So if you have the westerly duct, uh, this influence can go clearly across the hemispheres. Finally, amplitude of the response in the equatorial zone and in the opposite hemisphere depends strongly on the magnitude of the equatorial westerly. So the weak westerly duct and the strong westerly duct had a uh, very different extent of the penetration of the signal from one hemisphere into the other hemisphere. So estimating the dependence of stationary Rossby wave group velocity on the mean zonal wind in the westerly duct, the LY is the, uh, in kilometers refers to the meridional E-folding scale uh, the decay scale over a 10 day period. This is for done for a perturbation at Ka equal 3 wave. You can think of it as arising from a breaking Rossby wave in the storm track or so. Uh, so this is the basic state here, westerlies 5, 10, 15, 20 meter per second. L over A is the modulation of the meridional wave number. Because you are moving in the meridional direction and the radius of the Earth is also changing, it's done this way. So you can see the change uh, as a uh, combination. Waves become longer and longer in the meridional. Group velocity in the zonal direction uh, obviously depends on the Doppler shifting by the uh, westerly duct as well. Uh, so you have uh, longer wavelengths associated with uh, 
faster group velocities and what we are interested in more is the meridional group velocity that's what is bringing the energy into the deep tropics so that also increases with the l uh, longer wavelengths and the de folding scale uh, increases which means you have the perturbation traveling much further along the meridional uh, direction okay so just focus on the physics we'll now look at a more realistic case but I hope it's clear that we are basically combining equatorial wave dynamics with perturbations from the mid tropics and the dependence of the wave dynamics on the zonal uh, basic state and its variability we are trying to see just how uh, much of the extratropical perturbation can uh, affect the deep tropics because we are still going to go after uh, what triggers convection and what creates baroclinic processes in the deep tropics.